I'm Nicole Nighthawk and I'm here for Australian Musician with the amazing Nita Strauss, touring guitarist for Alice Cooper. That's right. Hello, welcome. I'm thank, so excited. Th- thank you so much for joining us. And I know you've got such a busy schedule. You're here today for a masterclass, but you've managed to fit us in. So thank you. Thank you for having me. So look, tell me, you're touring with Alice Cooper. Right. That must be an absolute dream. It is. It really, really is. I, I, I wake up every single day feeling lucky, for sure. What What's the best part about being on stage with Alice? Um, the best part about being on stage with him, really, I think, is that he just keeps us all on our toes, really. You know, you're you're performing with a legend like Alice Cooper. You can't really have a bad show. You know, the pressure's on to deliver every single night because he's known for the stage show, and the band and I are excited. We're pumped to deliver that to the fans every single night. Yeah, look, you, you bring such like such a power performance when you come to the stage. How was that early on? Like when you first got the gig, how did you get the gig to start with? So I started playing with Alice in 2014. Um, I was actually recommended by his former bass player, uh, very well known uh, from the band Winger as Kip Mm -hmm. Winger. And uh, Kip was playing with Alice and uh, stayed in touch with the Alice camp and recommended me in 2014 when they needed somebody to replace Mm Orianti. And uh, I started touring with him that year And I remember one of the first things he said to me is, when you go out front for your solo, you're Alice Cooper. Like, so don't be afraid. Like, don't ever feel afraid to, like, step in that spotlight, you know. Obviously, don't cross him when he's singing. (laughs) Like, you don't want to take the spotlight from him when he's doing his thing. But if he's taking a step back and I'm doing a solo, like, he he wants the band to get out there and, and give the audience the best show. And how generous of him to do that you know he doesn't have to give anybody the spotlight he's freaking Alice Cooper yeah, but, but you own it I mean like when you, you go out it's like here I am baby <laughs> rock you like a hurricane yeah absolutely the hurricane is here yeah how was it like the very first gig do you remember the first gig with him oh gosh I remember it like yesterday Were you like, like oh my god oh my god <laughs> it was crazy and um you know I tell this story often in my clinics but I I used to play in so many different bands and and one of them was a cover band which played like sort of 80s songs you know Bon Jovi and Def Leppard and stuff and we played Poison by Alice Cooper and I just remember my first time standing on stage you know with Alice and that sample hit to start Poison that sort of whoosh sound and the lights sort of did that cross and uh, and I looked over and like there was the man himself and that was sort of like my rock star movie moment of like wow if you work hard enough and you want it bad enough dreams come true because this like I used to play this song in a cover band and now I'm standing here playing it with us. Amazing. It is amazing. And you are amazing. So, you, you. I mean, you've worked so hard to get to where you are. What, what's your kind of workout regime? Ah, oh, the workout regime. Yeah, yeah. Because I know you, you're into your fitness as well. Oh, yes. So definitely. what's a typical week for you? So I do, um, I follow a pretty strict diet nutrition plan. Uh, I use a company called RP Strength uh, and that's my nutritionist's. And they do a, a pretty detailed template for what you can eat. And, you know, it's not like, oh, you must have chicken and broccoli at this time. But it's like it's a it's based on your macros. So you have, you know, X amount of protein, vegetables and carb and stuff like that. Yeah, it's right. a ton of food, actually, yeah, which, yeah, right. which I love. You I know, we need all that energy. on You stage. do need it. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, having having a company like that really who is, you know, science based nutritionist and and not just somebody telling you, hey, you have to, you know, starve yourself because that's what everybody's done this at one point or another. You go, I have to get in shape. I have to, you know, starve myself and, you know, deny myself foods and, you know, deny myself nutrition. So having a nutritionist working with me to keep me in ship shape, you know, mm. touring physique is really important. Yeah. So you're working out physically or how many, like, every day or? Every day, just yeah. about. Yeah. Actually, we took a boxing class earlier wow. today in yeah, Auburn. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I also have a, a trainer, um, Adam, at Team Elite Physique, who trains, he actually trains uh, fitness competitors, so like bikini bodybuilding competitors. Yeah. So even though obviously I don't compete, I'm training in the same way that a competitor would train. Um, so that really helps me sort of stay in peak physical condition. Again, yeah. you're running around on stage, you exactly. know, you don't want to be out of breath. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's something people can overlook as well. They, they don't realize that physical demand on your body. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so. Nothing's more uncool, or I should say nothing is less cool than like running across the stage and you're like, ah. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> like, that was a big solo. <laughs> give me a minute. <laughs> you know, you got to you gotta do the, you know, the 1992 Axl Rose. You got to sprint across the stage and then yeah. do a spin. You yeah, can't yeah. Be you can't be running across stage getting with it. Yeah. And how many hours guitar practice as well? Because you got to fit that in. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, not as much these yeah. days. Okay. Uh, I find, Shh. yeah. <laughs> Don't I, listen. You know, no, everybody practice. <laughs> but I, I do find that uh, my practice time now is really sort of laser focused on what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. So if I'm getting, you know, at the moment we're 
you know, doing clinics, so I'm sort of going over my clinic stuff. As soon as I get home, I'm going to be uh, finishing up recording my second album. So that's going to be like technique, 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 chops, chops, chops. Yeah. Coming, up, you know, come up with some licks that I haven't used before, and like sort of try to experiment stylistically. And then after that, we'll be back on the Alice tour, so I'll be, you know, revving the Alice set and doing yeah. that stuff over and over. So my practice time is really just sort of focused on what I'm working on next, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, perfect yeah. sense. And so something that you're known for is that you were, you were the first female Ibanez signature <laughs> artist, so you've got your own beautiful Ibanez guitar. Hi. and. This thing is sexy. So this is the Jiva. Yeah, this is, yes. Tell me about what went into designing this to make it your own. Well, I mean, when my mom first got a look at my signature guitar, she said, oh, honey, your guitar looks exactly like you. It does. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> yes. Black and blonde. <laughs> exactly, it does. So, um, so the Jiva is sort of like, this is my, like, my Goldilocks guitar. This is the guitar that, you know, every other guitar before this one, there was just one thing I wanted to change about it. You know, this is, would be perfect, but the pickups are, you know, I want to change these pickups, or I wish I had a maple neck, or I wish I had, you know, this. So the Jiva is like, this is everything I've ever wanted in mm. a guitar. And uh, it's sleek, it's sexy, it's easy it, to play. It's a sexy guitar, it really is. And, and I love yeah. this, I love the, the heartbeat. The yeah. heartbeat I love too. It's, um, it's something that I wanted to do that was really unique to my guitar, mm. but I didn't want to do a sort of fretboard that I know that some of the fretboards that aren't the typical fretboard are a little hard to follow. Mm -hmm. Like real talk, I have a gem and sometimes I lose <laughs> my <laughs> track of the fretboard. So the spikes on the EKG heartbeat of the Jiva actually correspond to the dots on the fretboard. So yeah, you have amazing. your three, five, seven, nine, twelve, and mm -hmm. so forth. And that way you always still know where you're at, even though it's not the typical inlay. Yeah. And they're nice and big, so you can see them. Exactly. And the higher up you get on the fretboard, the faster the heartbeat gets. So I kind of, I couldn't have planned that anyway. And, and <laughs> when you're on stage, it's like you're one with your guitar. So it's like you share Absolutely. the same heartbeat. Exactly. So, and you can see that in your performances. Thank you so much. So, that means yeah, a lot. Beautiful guitar. I'm just and, obsessed with it. <laughs> and these are your signature pickups as well. Yeah. They are, yeah. These are the DiMarzio Pandemonium pickups. And what's really interesting about these is you can kind of see, hopefully you guys can see on the camera, the, the detail on them because it's got the hurricane pattern there. That's cool. Um, but what a lot of people don't notice is the the sort of pattern of the holes here. And it's really a good uh, gauge of what a person is like, what they think the hole looks like. <laughs> because I have a lot of guys come up to me and they're like, wow, I just love how you put fishnet pattern in between. And it's like, well, it's actually a vintage ribbon mic. <laughs> but thanks for thinking that it's really feminine, it's fishnet. <laughs> I mean, this guitar definitely has a bit of a, a feminine edge, but mm -hmm. it's got still that, that rock kind of Look totally. To it. Like it's kind of that really nice balance between. I see a lot of dudes playing it and a lot of girls yeah, playing yeah. it. Yeah, anyone is cool. could. It's it's that yeah. nice crossover. It's not pink or anything. You know? No, no, <laughs> it's it's very classy but very sexy Thank at the you. same time. So, and you've got this strap on it. So tell me yeah. what's special about this particular strap. Let me uh, put it around to the front so everybody can see. But yeah, this is the uh, the special sort of firefight version of my signature Levy strap. So um, I actually just unveiled my signature strap this year at Nam. And it's, it looks a lot like this. It's black and gold, like the Jiva. But um, we were talking about coming over here, and we knew we were going to be doing the bushfire relief benefit. And um, you know, we thought, what can we do to sort of even add a little bit to that? And we had already done actually quite a bit. We donated the proceeds from, uh, from my Patreon page uh, and also from the last day of my fitness challenge, my body shred sign-ups. Oh, really? Yeah, to, uh, to, I'm learning how to say it, how to pronounce it correctly, but Port Macquarie. Port Macquarie. Macquarie. You need I to sound a little more slang and bogan. Port Macquarie. Macquarie. <laughs> <laughs> Koala Hospital. <laughs> See, I don't understand that because it's, <laughs> Quay is pronounced key, but Macquarie is not pronounced Macquarie. Yeah, nothing makes sense, sense here. <laughs> nothing, ma nothing makes sense in Australia. I think that <laughs> that's wrong. But <laughs> anyway, so uh, so Say let it me. Say however you like. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> we came up with this idea, um, you know, we thought well, you can always do more. So uh, we came up with this idea to do a sort of spin-off of my signature strap, which of course has the Aussie flag. It's got my signature embossed here. And it's also got a little hidden kangaroo. Oh, cute. And on the back, let's see, is it hidden under here? 
might be yeah it's also got a little koala oh, hidden in the filigree which i think is kind of cool um so and where, where can you purchase this you can get this now uh i know the first round actually sold out in 12 oh, wow. hours um, <laughs> Amazing. but hopefully by the time you guys are watching this they'll have more uh online at manny's music the website and mm -hmm. uh if anyone's coming to the clinics today and tomorrow they can also purchase them there mm -hmm. and all of the benefits you know 100 percent of the profits from that will be going to port macquarie koala <laughs> hospital <laughs> perfect yes. so fire Firefight, firefight, a firefight concert. Tell me, tell me what that was like. I mean, you, yeah, it was massive, and you pl played along bands like Queen, one of my favorites. I think they're one of your favorites. Mine as well. well. Yeah, that must have been pretty amazing. Unreal, totally unreal. It's, uh, it was definitely a rush to get to do it, and we didn't actually realize how big it was. You know, obviously, like we knew we were in the stadium and we saw all the people there, but we didn't realize how many people were watching at home until like hours after we'd finished and they said uh 80 000 in attendance and 24 million watching on tv and no we pressure. all looked at each other and we we're like <laughs> wait they said what we played in front of who <laughs> um so it was definitely um short but sweet mm, we only yeah, played four huge. songs yeah. um and uh it's always a little odd playing a short set, you know, and I've been in this situation a few times where you're, you know, out, you know, playing at something like WrestleMania where you're on stage for a short time and then you get off stage, you're like, where did that what just happened? Happen? <laughs> what just happened? Um, we were, you know, we're on stage for 20 minutes and, and got to do our part and help out. I think we raised $10 million, which we plan to do with the strap. But <laughs> you make it. <laughs> something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what an honor it is to get to do what we love and mm. uh, and help out as well. Yeah, and did you, you got some time with Brian May? So I did. Hero of yours? Yes, it was, it was incredible getting to meet Dr. May. Uh, I put one cover song on my album and it's a Queen cover and to have the chance to chat with Brian about it and just tell him how much his music has meant to me and and what was crazy about it was he sounded surprised to hear that and you know I shook his hand and I said thank you so much for inspiring me and and, and he seemed totally surprised that I would say that <laughs> like and he said well you know you're, you're playing stuff that I don't even play like you know our styles are so different and uh, I think it's just a testament to the music of Queen and the incredible technique and effortless playing of Brian that his his influence is felt even by people who make music that sounds nothing like Queen. Yeah, absolutely. And influence can come from anywhere too, so Definitely. I think it's, that's an important point. Yeah. And so when you're playing on stage with Alice, what's your general sort of rig set up? So with Alice, I'm using the Marshall JVM 410H. Okay, cool. Um, sort of classic, you know, Ryan, Tommy and myself are all Marshall guys. Uh, and a girl, <laughs> and uh, but totally different rigs. Um, same thing with guitars. You know, me with the Ibanez, Ryan and Tommy with the Gibsons, and uh, Tommy's got a Duesenberg in there, and a couple other random ones. Um, so it's interesting to have three totally different guitar players, three totally different rigs, yeah. uh, diff completely different setups and guitars, but like the same vibe. Yeah, you know? yeah, totally. And, and how many works. guitars do you take sort of on tour or have there as backup on stage? So I take four on and tour. Are they all the same? Uh, no, no, I've got, uh, I've got, I'm using only the Jivas now on yep. stage. So there are two new Jiva models coming out for 2020. There's the Jiva Junior and the Jiva X. Cool. Um, and I'm just a little bit obsessed with them. <laughs> <laughs> different colors? Or? Yes, different okay. colors. So the Jiva Junior, they both came out uh, at NAMM in January. Um, the Jiva Junior is a black to blue to blonde yeah, right. um, so it's got a little bit of a, a blue tint to it it's sort of made to look like a beach because okay. I'm from Santa Monica California it sort of gives a little nod to where I'm from bit of home. yeah we call it the beach burst nice. I think the, the official color is deep sea blonde this is deep space blonde yeah. so it's deep sea blonde and then the Jiva X is the Japanese made one and that is transparent black oh, quilt cool, top cool, which is cool. very sexy indeed awesome <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's those are my guitars that I'm using on stage, and then I keep one more just to kind of have to warm up and practice yeah. and stuff. But you have your main guitar, like because every bit of wood is different, so every guitar right. feels sounds slightly different. They do, but the Jivas are are fairly uniform. Um, they they are slightly different tonally, but. Uh, not much, to be honest with you. Well, one thing I noticed with this guitar, I've seen mm -hmm. some videos of you like holding that in the palm of your hand. Oh yeah. And like uh, guitars that I've got at home, you know, heavy Gibsons, things like that. Mm -hmm. You can't do this, like. Yeah. That, so, it, so I do that incredible. to demonstrate the balance, yeah. really. Uh, so if you can see, you're actually not even holding it. If you hold, if you put your hand at the neck joint, it balances perfectly between the neck and the body of the guitar, yeah. which I love because you're not fighting it one way yeah. or the other. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the conversion is. I should actually look it up before tonight's clinic, but it's, uh, <laughs> it weighs about six and a half pounds. Yeah. Um, 
I should look up what that is in kilos. <laughs> but it's uh, very, very light. Yeah. yeah, put it in the caption. <laughs> Which is important when you're on stage for a long time. Like, you know, that's Absolutely. something that can hurt your shoulders over time, your back, all that kind of thing. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, between when I'm on tour with Alice and I'm doing clinics on days off, I've got this guitar on my shoulder for 90 minutes a day, seven days a week. Yeah. And that would really do a number on my shoulder if I was using something heavier or less balanced where I was constantly pulling the neck up or pulling the body up. So yeah. you should, your guitar should always work for you. Yeah. It should never work against you. Yeah, and this lets you kind of run around in your athletic style. Exactly. Like powerhousing the hurricane. Exactly. The you don't yeah. want it to feel like a sandbag. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, a exactly. CrossFit or something. <laughs> totally. Now we've got a pedal next to you. This yes. is the Boss GT1000. So this is something else that you use on the road. When yeah. do you use this pedal? So the GT1000 is my go-to anytime I have to carry my own gear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's become like that, hasn't it? It's totally <laughs> that. So, you know, the Alice rig is gigantic. I've got a 24 space rack and two heads and, you know, it's massive. I, you know, it takes takes 10 men to lift it. I don't but know. you've got the men there. So. We've got the boys there, <laughs> yeah. they do it. Um, but so everything I do with my solo band, my entire solo tour, um, everything big that I do, like uh, if I'm playing at a WWE wrestling event, mm -hmm. if I'm playing the national anthem at you know a sports event, anything like that, um, I use the GT1000 yeah. for that. And uh, it is the best workhorse. It does everything that I need um, in such a compact, package yeah um, it's the only thing I use for my clinics now it's very very simple and it's such an exciting product that like I like doing clinics with it because it gets people as excited about it as I am yeah which yeah. is cool so this is an amp simulator so it's got your mm -hmm. amps cabs and mm -hmm. effects in there all in one so exactly you can just plug that into a PA and go that's exactly what I do yeah, yeah. so Amazing. that's my favorite part of my clinic where I go what amp do you guys think I'm using and they're like wait a second there is no amp up there <laughs> And yeah, it's got uh, incredible simulation, like cabinet simulation, and it's so accurate and so uh, like lifelike mm. that not only does it simulate the speaker, but it simulates the movement of the speaker cone and how close the mic is to it yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it does beautiful synth sounds as well, which is something that you don't generally get out of just a guitar pedal. No. You normally would have to get like the MIDI pickup and everything attachment to it. Yeah. So to get that out of a quarter inch cable is really incre incredible. And then you also have the expression pedal here, which does, you know, your whammy, your wah, your harmonizer, your delay, your volume, mm. like, not the delay, but the, all that other stuff. Anything that you would use a regular expression pedal for, it has it all built in there. Yeah, and that's a nice addition because they don't all have that, so. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's really cool. And it's just a pressure switch on the end, so you're not doing that pedal tap dance of like, okay, turn this off, turn this off, turn yeah, this off. So you yeah. just, you're already on it, you put the pressure on your toe and it's on. Yeah. It's right, really easy. Right. And the pedal's pretty simple to use because some of them can be like really complex, so. Yeah, it's as you simple as you it. want it to you be. Gotta <laughs> learn it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll put it this way. Um, I, when I do my clinics, I use all stock sounds. Mm, and okay. I do that because I want it to be accessible to people. Yeah. It's, as, it's as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Yeah. If you're a big nerd, you can get so deep in there. You know, you can change the, the order of the pedals and switch them on and off and diff, you know, different oscillations of delays and stuff. But yeah, if you maybe. just want something that you can plug in and make it sound great, in five minutes, that's also that pedal. It does it, yeah, yeah. It does do it. And that's why, you know, I was I was speaking to my boss rep here in Melbourne last night and we were talking about it and I said, the the out of the box sounds are so good that you really don't need to tweak them. Like you can tweak them to your own personal preference, but you don't have to tweak them to make it sound good. And that's a nice thing because there's nothing worse than getting a new toy. Yes. <laughs> and you open the box and you've got no idea how to use it. And, and it it's takes such a headache. Yeah, you, yeah. You've got to basically get a degree just to use the thing. Big so, time. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we touched on a little earlier about inspirations and mm -hmm. you're a massive inspiration to a lot of guitarists out there. Thank you. And dare I say a lot of female guitarists as well because so. <laughs> you, you're one of the top in the world. You're amazing. And I think it's been a, a typically male dominated instrument, right. lead guitar. So, mm -hmm. you know, for females as well to see somebody like yourself out there doing what you do. It means a lot. It, it's just incredible, you know. And Thank you. Um, I, you know, we were chatting before we, we spoke here and, um, you know, your name was just coming up everywhere I went in Melbourne. Just everyone's, Nita Strauss, Nita Strauss, Nita Strauss. So exciting. Amazing. She's so amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The concert. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really great. What what advice would you give to up and coming young guitarists, male, female, anyone that sort of wants to do what you do as a touring guitarist? I think the best piece of advice that I could give to anybody, young, old, male, female, anybody, is just go out there and play guitar. I think it's so easy in 2020 to get bogged down in uh, YouTube and Instagram and social media. And yes, it is. It's very important. I'll be the first one to say it. Instagram is great. <laughs> but um, 
it doesn't take the place of going out there and playing shows in front of people. Um, so going out there, you know, playing open mics, playing coffee shops, you know, playing in cover bands, tribute bands, whatever you can do to sort of get seasoned as a guitar player. And I'm not saying go out and do these things instead of doing your own music, but do it in the interim so when that big time does come, when the big break comes and you know your band gets a record deal or you get offered a big tour or someone like Alice comes calling and says, can you come and play guitar in my band? you're seasoned and you're prepared, you're comfortable, you know your equipment, mm. you're not gonna lose your cool when your singer steps on your tuning pedal and mutes everything. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. You know, there's always gonna be some little thing that goes wrong. My last clinic, I told this exact story and then I started playing the, the song Poison and I had a pick in my strings and everything was out of tune. I was going, what the fuck is this? And the guy in the audience goes, you've got a pick in your strings. I was like, what did I tell you? <laughs> I really apologize for that terrible impression, by the way. I mean, no offense to Australian accents. But, uh, you know, yeah. but it just goes to show you. I mean, I've played thousands of shows. Yeah. I mean, in the tens of thousands. And something always happens every single yeah. time. And when that happens, it's easy to get rattled if you're not a seasoned performer. Yeah. And so just go out there and play as much as you can. Be prepared for constant disappointment and rejection and people being rude and mean on the internet uh, does not mean anything. It doesn't, people being com you know, complimentary on the, on the internet doesn't yeah. mean anything. People being rude on the internet doesn't mean anything. Just go get forward, out get out there and yeah. do it. So what's next for you? You're wrapping up with Alice and this tour mm -hmm. uh, in June. So mm -hmm. you've got your album Control Chaos that came out 2018. That's right, yeah. What are you working on? So album two is on the way. It's, uh, it's very well on the way, actually. Uh, I've got my Universal Audio Apollo out on the road. I'm recording on, great. yeah, every, isn't it so great? Yeah. Uh, I've got it, you know, set up in the hotel room just about every single day off and just recording stuff, getting ideas down. Um, we will finish here down under, I think, next week, mm -hmm. and I'll go home. I'll have three weeks home that I can really go and laser in. I'm planning to get like a big bulk of the writing for the album done. Uh, then we go out and finish with Alice for the summer, and then after that, it'll be all, I think, controlled chaos until the fall. Nita Strauss, thank you so much for your time. Thank Thanks you. for joining us, and um, all the best for the rest of your tours, and great, have great fun tonight. Thank you so much.